Hey, what's up everybody? Joe Coffey here for PremierGuitar.com. We're in Burbank, California, on location to check out Schechter Guitar Research. I've got uh, one of the big dogs at Schechter with me right now, Mark LaCourt. Mark, how are you, sir? Good to see you. How you doing? Good, good, thanks. Hey, thanks for uh, taking us through here. What are we going to look at today? Uh, I'm going to give you the grand overview of what we do here. I'll give you the two-cent tour. Meet some of the guys that take care of everything from us for us day to day and uh, give you a little insight about basically what Schecter is and what makes us hum. of our guitars come from South Korea and uh, what most people don't know we like to, to expose if you will is that every guitar we have comes here first to Burbank gets pulled out of a box and gets checked any problems that we may find when they come in from the factory directly uh, we have direct communication with them daily customizing this guitar for one of our endorsement artists um, Mark Thwaite uh, he's uh, been playing with Peter Murphy, and so uh, we're doing a custom one for him. This is actually a, a production, or uh, that's actually not a production guitar. Came from our factory. Um, he had a few options that he wanted the Sustaniac in it, so we're doing that with some custom. You can't see right now, but uh, it has a push pull on and off here, and then it has a harmonic fundamental switch here, and then it also uh, has a coil tap on the bridge. I deal with uh, the factories. Making sure that the quality is Schecter quality. Uh, they do a, they do a QC on it and make sure that it, it fits the the needs of, of what we have the requirements set for a Schecter guitar. So they get pulled out, checked, intonated, frets leveled, any you know get dressed, anything that needs to be done, truss rod adjustments. These guys do it. Make sure everything functions, gets in a box, and gets shipped to a dealer. Level level sand the fretboards, file and polish the fret ends, polish the tops of the frets. Um, just uh, neck relief, action height, nut height, intonation, pickup height. Make sure knobs are tight, make sure the electronics work, make sure it plays. It's all about the same. The, this, the, in this one particular one, you got to get this pickup lower than normal, just so that the output's even. But other than that, they're all about the same. Got done crowning and leveling the frets. Gonna polish it up right now, and uh, my goal here is to uh, make it so when somebody picks this up in the store, they don't want to put it back down. Tips and tricks is just kind of just understanding the guitar, you know, and just like because this uh, there's a whole science to it. Doing the neck relief, uh, knowing the bridge height and intonation, especially for uh, guitars and basses that play up above the 12th fret, it's good to always know how to do your intonation or have it done. And uh, even nut height as well. Right now I'm intonating the guitar and checking the action, seeing if uh, it's at spec. You want it at 230 seconds right here. Almost where it is. Should be at about 651. Put screwdriver here. And I noticed you didn't look at a chart to figure out what that number is. You've been doing this for a while, huh? Yeah, I've been working here for about five years. I'm setting up an artist's guitar for a band called Art of Dying. That's one of Dan Donegan's uh, newly signed bands to his new label, so. I'm just customizing the guitar to how the guitar responds is specifically, and basically that's what I'm doing. Any tips or tricks uh, you could share with people out there? Mm, none that I can reveal. 
So for us, it's the, it's that pride of making sure that this guitar is the best it can be before it leaves. We don't we don't drop containers off and ship direct to dealers. That's just not how we do business. All right, Mark, where are we now? So we're upstairs. We have our like little uh, balcony section. This is where uh, most of the upstairs offices are for sales and the creative departments of Schechter Guitars. This is uh, a really cool story, actually. Uh, Dee Dee was a friend of ours and used to come down uh, when our, our offices were on Highland for a while. And um, we've had this, I guess, I want, I want to say about 10 years. And sadly, um, you know, obviously when Dee Dee passed away, we came in that morning and the guitar had tumbled down. It was hanging on the wall and mysteriously that day, it's like, you know, it sounds silly, but it is kind of a cool ghost story. You know, we came in the next morning, the guitar was facing down. It had fallen off the, the top and was, was, was hanging down. And that was the, the day we heard that he had passed away. Do you have a second to chat with us, Mike? Yeah, I'm really busy. Who, I, I would know you guys from. <laughs> nice to have everybody get a, like a peek behind the curtain. I think it's probably what you would hope a guitar company would be, but probably most of them aren't, which, you know, I mean, is this just like everything you see, or is this what you thought this was going to be? Well, I tell you, I haven't met anybody who doesn't play so far. Yeah, most all the guys down here have uh, um, bands either to play locally or, you know, regionally. You need to know how to play guitar if you want to work here. It seems like everybody plays. Uh, it's not a requirement, but I think it's just, it's, uh, it, it works. It's been that way from the beginning. I think we kind of attract, you know, the cast of characters. And, uh, you know, where a lot of companies would may look outside them, themselves to, to kind of get a feel of, you know, what's going on, we have it built in here. I mean, it's no better testament than when you actually play what you sell and r really believe in it. And I think that's been... A secret to our success that you know I don't think anybody really wants to try to duplicate. What are we looking at here? Uh, th this guitar, uh, after the tragedy of 9/11, which you know I, I, I still remember vividly, sitting with my uh, my oldest daughter, I think was two at the time or three, and just how that uh, affected me. And then a lot of the guys that work with are from the East Coast, and just kind of this helpless feeling, and, and sort of how maybe unappreciated, you know, you grow up thinking, oh, policemen, firemen, you know, always the enemy and stuff, and just seeing what those guys did, you know, that day and the days after, we, we just felt like we wanted to do something. So uh, I had a, an artist friend of mine, a girl named Lisa, just did this drawing, and we had a factory. We made a hundred of these, and we sent them. It, it took a lot of leg work, but we found someone in New York. It, it, amazing how how hard it is sometimes to give something to, to people. I guess they, a lot of people feel you're either trying to capitalize or, or want something in return. And this was just, I, we didn't go any press. I mean, it, it was so far from being about anything like that. So we made a hundred of these and we finally were able to get them to all the hook and ladder companies, all the, uh, in all the boroughs. Every, every uh, company that had lost someone got one of these guitars just to keep in, in their, uh, their station just figured those guys have long hours and a lot of them play and it was just a, a tribute and a thank you uh, so we sent them out and then it's like a couple of months went by and it start, we just started getting boxes from each of these companies I mean I have t-shirts from all the latter companies that are signed and they started sending these plaques and they made like these cool statues and one of them sent us a flag they used to fly out front and uh, and then they started calling. So, you know, sitting there, you get, you know, a big New York voice on the other end, and a couple of minutes later into the conversation, the guy's breaking down. It's just like, fuck, you're thanking me. I'm thanking you. You got, you know, it's just, there's a, still, still something that affects me uh, to this day that, you know, this happened, but uh, it's something that we wanted to do. And, you know, again, it's not about, you know, the name on the headstock. It's just about, you know, trying to, to give back. It's, it's nice to be in a position to be able to do that and, and ask nothing in return. All right, so here we are in uh, Mike's office. Check this out. Just what you would expect. It's a mess. There's guitars everywhere and uh, the two newest members of my family. <laughs> Who are these guys? That would be Champ and Bella. Two, uh, I got them for my birthday and they're a whopping four months old, so they're only about half grown. So. 
And in the tank? In the tank, that's my two lionfish. Poisonous, but really interesting. I, I kind of had those when I was a kid, and uh, they're cool fish. They're, they're very uh, hypnotic to watch, kind of, you know, when the day gets really uh, crazy here, which it tends to do. I'll just sit there and watch them and <laughs> contemplate putting my hand in there and getting stung. <laughs> I grew up in New Orleans, and uh, it's my team. I kind of uh, live for that. That's my uh, escapism. And the, the guitar he's taking a look at there is actually signed by the Super Bowl team. Growing up with the Saints and after Katrina happened, uh, we've been doing guitars each year for the team. And it's nothing that we sell. We make, uh, it's been a limited amount. I think we started the first year with 20 of them. And uh, they go to the team and the team uh, autographs them and they auction them for charity. And I think those are the first four years of them. Uh, the one he just filmed is, is last year's. The office was just way oversized, and I think it had couches and stuff over here. And I've always had a, a studio at my house, and I finally decided when we moved that the garage should actually, maybe in this house, actually be to pull the cars into. So we moved it here, and uh, we've done quite a few records. Johnny and Greg are in a band together, did both of their albums in here. Uh, the PC-101 band, and you've heard a, a, a lot from Colin and Matt and myself. We've, we've done all the... Uh, the demos or whatever uh, the stuff in here, but it's a it's an old Pro 2 setup. Recording and everything used to really excite me, but I'm kind of back to guitars again, which is nice. Uh, but it's nice to have, and it, you know everybody here is welcome to use it and you know to, to to do stuff. All right, Mike, we are in the Schechter Custom Shop area. Tell me about what goes down in this room. So this is uh, in back in the main building. This is the uh, the final assembly. Uh, Shigeki usually will do the uh, complete the order sheet, and then any the stuff that needs to be built goes back across the street where the woodworking's done. Uh, if it's an oil finish or a tint, we'll do that there. If it gets paint uh, painted, we we'll send it out to Pat Wilkins Finish and a couple other painters that we use. And then when the guitars uh, the paint and the finishing is complete, it'll come back here and Shigeki will do final assembly depending on the pickups, hardware, uh, and that's the magic right there. That I feel, and a lot of other players feel, that his fret work is second to none. It's uh, it's it's kind of the final thing that gives the, the guitar the uh, the feel, the you know uh, the personality, and it's just the attention to detail, and it, it comes from him being a player, and uh, you know just just the care and the over the top anal analism. <laughs> that sounds like a porn word, but <laughs> my friend uh, of mine, Takumi. Uh, was actually Prince's tech for a long time and we still have a rapport with Paisley Park and uh, we built a couple of the cymbal or Haji guitars uh, for Prince as well as a bunch of cloud guitars and they come back time to time it, he'll snap one of the horns off or we went through quite a few of them uh, and actually converted them from having a, uh, a hardtail uh, he must have got into having Floyd Rose, so this one's getting modified to actually have a, a Floyd locking tremolo on it. So we route the cavity, have it repainted, uh, and you know everything to, to convert to go to a Floyd Rose, and then this will get uh, assembled and sent back out to him. The Strat that he, uh, that he played on the Super Bowl uh, a couple of years back, we actually built the neck for. Usually his guitars have like a 38 to 40 millimeter nut, a really small, uh, and we actually made a neck to go in that guitar for it. So it doesn't say Schechter on the headstock, it does say it on the back, but you know, kind of nice seeing it out on stage. The guy's an amazing player. It's about as custom shop as you're going to get. It's, I think probably people thought it was a lot more high tech, but Shigeki's got it extremely organized. You know, it was definitely controlled chaos, but all these guitars, uh, you know, there is rarely a custom guitar that's just made for purchase. It's usually all pre-ordered, you know, down to the uh, the exact spec. And uh, you know, besides U.S., we sell. Uh, there's still a, a, a great appreciation of an, a handmade American guitar uh, overseas. A lot of our distributors are, uh, you know, will you know purchase them 15, 20 different models at a at a time. We call it the original California custom shop, and it is a true custom shop in every sense of the word, you know, everything, you know, when you know what you want or something duplicated, a feel, a sound, uh, you know, we can do it and it's, you know, the guitar doesn't leave, you know, it's two people that touch it from start to finish. And uh, on our website, which is being updated, uh, it's going to take a lot more focus on the custom shop. Uh, some of the 
history, some of the some past models, some stuff that we've done for artists, and also I think we're we're in the process of doing sort of a uh, a, ca a price calculator to kind of get an idea of what the ballpark your guitar is going to go into. And again, it's not for everybody; it's expensive, but it is handmade, and uh, you know if you know exactly what you want, you know, and there's really just about nothing that we can't you know build for the customer and uh you know it's satisfaction is guaranteed and so take a look at the gallery you'll see a lot of you know we like to say exotic to the extreme from you know the the coolest most figured wood to six string seven string eight strings double necks insane graphics insane inlay work uh you know we pretty much cover it all and what is that web address? www.schechterguitars.com. All right, Mike, thanks so much for opening the doors here and showing us around, man. You know, kind of nice to show a little peek behind, uh, you know, the guy in the little Oz guy behind the curtain. It's like 30 uh, psychos. <laughs> right on. I'm Joe Coffey. You're watching PremierGuitar.com.